those three? Thank you. Welcome, media. We are joined by LSU coach Kim Mulkey and the student athletes Flossie Johnson, Angel Reese, and Haley Van Lith. And we'll open with comments from the coach. Thank you. I'm good. Good to go. Thank you. Let's start with the student athlete questions up here first. Pat Eaton, Rob, with the Associated Press. Angel, I know it hurts now, but you had mentioned just kind of what a wild ride this team has been on for the last year. Can you kind of describe? what it's meant to you, what it's been like for you, both the, the positives and the, you know, the negatives. Yeah, we've, we, we, we've seen everything this year. Um, we have been through so much adversity. So I'm more than proud of this team. Um, we don't have that much debt. We had some injuries. Some time, I took some time away from the team. Um, so many things happened this year and so many things hit us and we never folded. And just being able to come out tonight and give our all for 40 minutes, we didn't. We came up short, but we we we, we have to keep our heads high. Andrea Adelson with ESPN for Angel. We saw you go into I think fell into the cameras uh, in the second quarter. Um, did you twist your ankle at all? Would be the the first question. Did that affect you for the rest of the game? If if it did affect you? Yeah, I did roll my ankle on one of the cameras. Um, and I mean, I'm tough, so I tried to play through it, of course, and this is something that has been going on for a little while now, but I played through it, and I'm not gonna make that an excuse um, for the rest of my play for the game. Go ahead. Uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge for Haley and for Flage. Just what a tough cover Caitlin is. Uh, I mean, obviously you were fighting all night, but uh, just the challenge that, that she presents. Yeah, uh, Caitlin's very skilled. She's a great player. Um, she hit some tough shots, um, and there's not a whole lot you can do about some of the threes she hit. Um, 
And I think, you know, her role, or the team around her that plays a role, they did a good job of executing their role. So, uh, you know, ultimately they played better than us, and that's what it was. Right behind, nope, behind. Thank you. Hi, uh, sorry, uh, I'm Adler from The Next. Flower Jay, I wanted to ask specifically, just sort of going off that last question, you know, you had a few possessions against Caitlin down in the fourth quarter, you were able to force some turnovers, force some misses. What went into, you know, taking on that matchup and uh, trying to help spark a, a run? I mean, uh, just study her film. I think my length kind of bothered her. Uh, I'm aggressive, I just wasn't scared. You know what I'm first. saying? When you play a player yeah. like that, yeah, like, come. You gotta look him in the eyes and really take on that challenge. Um, just try to force her to her left. I know she wants to step back, and my, my length can, you know, bother her a little bit. But, you know, I gotta be better. Howard Mendel, the next. Um, congratulations on the season you guys have had. Uh, Flaje, if I could hear you uh, on Angel and the type of leadership that she's provided for this team and Angel, can you just take me through what it meant to see what Flaje was able to do in a game like this to you know, put up 23 points and, and be a factor on both ends? Bro, let me tell you something. Everybody can have their pen on Angel Reese, uh, but y'all don't know her. Put your hand up. Like, y'all don't know Angel Reese. I know Angel Reese. I know the real Angel Reese. And the person I see every day is a strong person. Is a caring, loving person, bro. The crown she wears is heavy, bro. She's the type of teammate that's gonna make you believe in yourself. The, the leap that I took from my freshman to sophomore year, Angel gave me that confidence to go be a dog. Playing next to a dog every day. And you know, just to see how the media ridicule her. Went through our problems, but like this is my sister right here, and I'm so proud of her. Like the media, y'all, how they like to twist and call it a villain and all of that. Y'all don't know Angel, bro, and I'm just happy that I get to play with her. I get to be around her presence. Her energy is different. Like she, she just made me a better player. She made me a better player, and that's what great players do. I'll say something too. Um, I think you know. Angel's one of the toughest people I've been around. Um, people speak hate into her life. I've never seen people wish bad things on someone as much as her. And, and it does not affect her. She comes to practice every day. She lives her life every day. She, she lives how she wants to live. And she don't let nobody change that. And you know, that's the, that's the key to life right there. Y'all do not get to her. Uh, let me say it again. Y'all do not get to Angel Reese. So you might want to give it up. Throw the towel in because you're wasting your energy. So Angel's one of the toughest people I've been around. Right here. Go ahead. Uh, Dan Zakrzewski, Outkick.com. Angel, do you have any thoughts on your uh, future plans in basketball? I'll make a decision when I'm ready. Uh, Jacques, do you say WAP TV in Baton Rouge? Do, do you need the players? The third quarter, what, what do you think kind of went wrong there? It seems like your little snake bit balls just rolled off the rim and some tough turnovers and so forth. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty much it. They, uh, they outscored us in the third quarter. Um, I think that was just experience, turnovers, like you said. Mm. I, I take that on the chin. I feel like I got to be better. Uh, just, just communicating with my team better, getting us into the offense better. Like, I got to be better. I think as a team, that third quarter, you know, kind of went under, never came back up per se, you know what I'm saying? But it was just, it, it was small mistakes. It's those everything, everyday things we do in practice that, you know, bad pass here, turn over here, defense, mis-execution, transition, you know what I'm saying? So it's going to be things that we got to clean up, but we take that on the chin. All set. Okay. Go ahead right here. I didn't have a question. You, you had your hand up. Go behind, then. <laughs> you did. Uh, ben Pickman from The Athletic. Um, this is for Flage and Angel. It seemed like, Angel, when you fouled out, you walked over to the sideline, and you put your arm around Flage, and Flage put your arm around you. Um, just what did you guys say in that moment, and, and what was that moment like for you both? Yeah, just telling her just to keep leading the team um, and don't give up and keep fighting. I mean, Flage has done a great job when – I'm down or not having my best game, being able to have a player like a teammate like Flage as a sophomore, only a sophomore, step up and just lead the team. And through everything, she's led the team throughout the whole year. So we've had that relationship and just being able to talk to her in that moment was great. Yeah, she was just, just like the said, she was just holding me accountable. You know, I was telling her, cheer us on. 
share a song, keep us going. You know what I'm saying? That's all I could do right there. Erica L. Ayala with CBSSports.com. Angel, this question will be for you if, you if you are willing to share. What was going through your mind as you heard your two teammates right here on the dais just taking the, the opportunity to, to really stand up for you and, and what your journey has been like that we don't get to see? I don't really get to stand up for myself. I mean, I have great teammates. I have a great support system. I got my hometown. I got my family that stands up for me. I don't really get to speak out on things just because I just try to ignore and I just try to stand strong. Like, I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I've been so many things and I've stood strong every single time. And I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down and like not be there for them. So I just want to always just know like I'm still a human. Like all this has happened since I won the national championship. And I said the other day, I haven't had peace since then. And it sucks, And but I still wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything. And I would still sit here and say like, I'm unapologetically me. I'm going to always leave that mark and be who I am and stand on that. And hopefully the little girls that look up to me and hopefully I give them some type of inspiration that, you know, hopefully it's not this hard and all the things that come at you, but keep being who you are. Keep waking up every day. Keep mo being motivated. Staying who you are. Staying ten toes. Don't back down. And just be confident. This is for uh, Kim. Can you talk a little bit? Let's wait till they leave. Sure, sure. Um, yes, then, only players right now. Thank sure. you. Sorry about that. If this is for Angel. Uh, can I? Uh, same question for Angel and, and all three of you. What What is the impact of the LSU Iowa rivalry on women's basketball? Let's start with Angel. Thank you. Um, I think it's just great for the sport, just being able to be a part of history. Um, like I said. No matter which way it went um, tonight, I know this is going to be a night for the ages. And just being able to part, be a part of history is great. Playing against another great player, of course, is always amazing in our viewership going up. And I'm sure so many different people watched us tonight. So I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to just keep raising women's sports, not just women ba women's basketball, but just women's sports in general. Logic? Yeah, um, it's good for the game. Well, Women's basketball has gone to new heights. I'm happy to be a part of it. Just happy to, happy to be a part of it. You know, it's not all the time you get to see players like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just blessed. Last year I was a freshman seeing everything. This year I'm a sophomore able to, con um, you know, contribute. Next year I'm gonna leave my mark and grow the game. Haley. Yeah, like they said, I mean, you know, it's an honor to be a part of it. It was an honor to be in that moment. Um, and the best thing about rivalries is they don't end. So LSU and Iowa will play each other again, and, um, you know, we'll have another opportunity. Last one. Last one is here. Uh, Angel, uh, it seemed like you had a nice uh, in, uh, exchange with uh, Caitlin and the handshake line. You mind sharing kind of what what you seem you know what you told her? Yeah, um, she just told me continue to be a great player, and I told her um, continue to be a great player as well, and keep elevating the game and uh, go win it. Thank you to the student athletes for your time this week. We appreciate it. Thank you. Good job. We'll now take questions for the coach. Start here, second row. Hi, coach. Uh, two quick questions. First, you know, it seemed like. Where it, are you from? Sorry. Yes, uh, identify a name and affiliation. Sorry, M. Adler from the next. Uh, two quick questions. Just what went into the strategy in terms of how you wanted to defend uh, Caitlin Clark? Um, and then also just wondering, you know, it seemed like you had a long embrace and some kind words for after the game of the handshake line. Just wondering if, if you wanted to share what those were. Well, there's not a whole lot of strategy. You got to guard her. Nobody else seems to be able to guard her. We didn't even guard her last year when we beat them. Um, she's just a generational player, and um, she just makes everybody around her better. 
That's what the great ones do. I think they had a kid that scored 21 and 18. She had 12 assists. Kaylin Clark's not going to beat you by herself. It's what she does to make those other teammates better that helps her score points and them score points to beat you. Um, what did I say to her? I said, I sure am glad you're leaving. <laughs> I said, girl, you something else. Never seen anything like it. Right here and then up here. Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV. Uh, were you surprised at all at the pace of that first quarter? Yes, I um, in talking to my team, we played to their pace. And um, back. we ended the first quarter with the lead. No, but no. Back first. I think their pace dictated um, that third quarter. I think it really, it really hit us in the third quarter, that pace. Kim, Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. How hobbled or how limited was Angel? And can you talk about the performance that she had despite that injury? Um, I didn't ask anybody, you know, how bad the sprain is. And I, honestly, I'm assuming it's the same ankle that she sprained in the SEC um, tournament. Um, but you're in the heat of the moment. You know, she's playing. Um, trainer never came to see me to give me any details, you know, so I don't know that Angel or I, either one, would ever make an excuse that her being hobbled was why we lost the game. Dan Zakshevsky, OutKick.com. Coach, your team wasn't on the floor during the national anthem. Uh, first part, was that a conscious decision on your part? Second, uh, can you say what the team was doing during that time? Honestly, I don't even know when the anthem was played. We kind of have a routine where we are on the floor and then they come off at the 12 minute mark. That's when you um, we just, I don't know, and we come in and we do our pregame stuff. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, listen, I, that's nothing intentionally done. Uh, Jacques Doucet, WAP TV in Baton Rouge. Uh, Coach, your players had some very passionate and animated comments just now right about there. Angel and treatment and um, criticism and whatnot. Just your thoughts of what you just listened to. Um, I'm going to assume something here now. I'm going to assume they're talking about social media attacks and I don't, I don't see all that. I don't do social media. I thought it was heartwarming. I thought it was um, touching. They are young people that are on social media and that is their teammate. And um, it sounded like to me, they've been wanting to get that off their chest. So I just listened like you guys did. Reed Darcy with the Advocate in Baton Rouge. Coach, when you look back at this season, what do you think you're gonna remember and feel the most? Proud, I'm going to feel very proud. Um, I'm going to um, think of the little things that we overcame that um, put us in an Elite Eight. You're one game away from going back to the Final Four. And I'm going to eventually think of how did we get here? How did we get here? What did we do as a team and as a staff to get to this moment? So basically, I guess what I'm telling you is you learn. You learn. I learn every day as a coach. Um, I look at this stat sheet and I just put a lot of little notes down there and I'll file it away and think about it when the emotion of a loss goes away. Um, we shot the ball, y'all, almost 20 times more than they did. So that's the pace I'm talking about. And then you look at that second 
and especially the third quarter where we just missed shots. Um, you'll, you'll dissect things like that. And um, yeah, I could probably tell you a bunch of things you'll dissect in X's and O's wise. Um, reverse the ball, just a little bit tougher in the moment. Um, depth. I mean, you could you could just sit and talk all day about the game. Um, only one team finishes the season happy, and boy, we got to do that last year. And somebody will get to do it this year. But everybody else is going to come up here and be sad. And you know, there's nothing wrong with being sad. If you're not sad, that means you didn't invest much. So those tears are tears of investment. Pat Eaton, Rob from the Associated Press. Kim, your players have talked about how since a calendar year ago they have become world famous for good, for bad. How has that strengthened your team, changed these young women, and what does it mean for these, the group going, that, it, that will be coming back and going forward? I've been doing this almost 40 years. That doesn't count as a player. We've changed, people. We've changed. And we've changed in so many good ways. And these young people will have a memory of being a part of something that was this great tonight. Being, many of them being a part of winning a championship last year. Um, I can't describe to you how good it is right now in women's basketball. That's why I wish this game could have been at the Final Four. Wow. Sure was good for an Elite Eight game. And um, we're proud to be a part of that. Um, good, bad, and different. Um, our world, our world has, has changed a lot when you talk about what they were just talking about, social media. I am honestly so oblivious to what those kids see, hear, and even participate in when it comes to social media. I know things when I need to know them from coaches or administrators or I need to address things, but I don't, I don't invest in any any of that I just I don't so if you want me to know something you better send it to me otherwise I don't see it unless a family member or a team member or somebody you know brings it to my attention here and then the last one in the middle go ahead hey coach Azar Johnson from Envy Sports um I wanted to ask you at Haley Van Liff it's clearly your last last game um if you could just and I'm pretty sure having the night she had um, if you could just speak to the contribution that she brought to this team and everything that she's done, because one game doesn't define anything. I'm pretty sure if anybody can speak on Haley and her contribution, you can. Well, I hope it's not her last game, but if it is, I'm proud to have been her coach for a year. You know, she's got another year if she wants to come back. So does Angel. Uh, I know they have to make decisions, but um, the thing that we talk about a lot on the men's side we talk about one and dones right and how you know terrible that is you know you, you go through a period you can't have you know these players for long periods of time man they're selfish they're going to take care of themselves look everybody's different and they got to do what they have to do Haley Van Lith came to LSU after being an abundant shooter shot at a lot at, at Louisville had great success, was on good teams. But she wanted, she graduated in three years with a finance degree. She wanted to experience all the things I guess she saw from, on a, from afar with our championship last year. And for her to take that leap of faith and leave her comfort zone at Louisville, you don't see many players do that when she was that big a 
piece to their puzzle. Um, she has embraced learning a new position, uh, taking less shots. Our last game against UCLA, I thought her stats were very good, but I'm an old point guard and I see all that. Um, forever indebted to Haley and her unselfish play to come to LSU to play with a lot of great players and learn a new position. Last one, go ahead. Just the growth that we've seen from Flash. Can you ID again and affiliation? Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. The growth we've seen from Flage and for Angel to sit there and say, you know, the leadership qualities that she showed this year, what does that do for your team coming back next year? Well, all three of these young ladies were um, voted captains. And for Flage to be selected as one of the captains as a sophomore um, pretty much sums it up. Uh, she is just a, a person of joy. She just plays the game with a lot of um, heart. And she's learning to become a leader at a young age. And um, I'm glad I get to coach her. Coach, thank you very You're much welcome. for your time this week. Mm -hmm. You're welcome.